So first we're going to look at why people have excess copper. So people are overexposed to copper for many reasons. Number one, estrogen. As I said, anything that raises estrogen increases copper retention. And it's not just our natural estrogen, it's also our environmental estrogens and our xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens. As estrogen builds up, copper builds up in our cells and our tissues, and much of this gets stored primarily in the liver and secondarily then in the brain and other organs, which goes on to affect both our physical health as well as our psychological health. The birth control pill is a major contributing factor to why we are seeing greater and greater prevalence of copper toxicity among the population in the past half century. So the copper epidemic became worse around the time of the advent of the birth control pill and copper IUDs. And with each generation, copper levels are getting higher. Women on birth control will, unfortunately, have a tendency towards higher levels of copper, keeping their estrogen high, which is how the pill works, by emulating the condition of pregnancy. Keeping estrogen high via keeping copper high shuts off the luteal phase of progesterone so that women won't be able to conceive. But this, of course, causes a huge cascade of unwanted mineral imbalances. So I mentioned the copper IUD, and so in this case, now the body is getting a direct source of copper right inside the body. Copper piping and copper cookware. So with piping, there's no proteins to bind to in the water, and the drinking water flowing through these copper pipes in homes leaches copper off from the pipes. And this copper then combines with sulfates and carbonates and phosphates to, to form copper sulfate and copper carbonate and copper phosphate, which is inorganic copper. And copper sulfate is another one to understand. So copper sulfate is an organic fungicide sprayed on a large amount of our fruits and vegetable, nut and field crops. So it's a fungicide used against bacterial and fungal diseases on this large number of our food sources. Yet numerous studies show that it's toxic to humans and to the environment. Yet it's approved as a pesticide under the USDA National Organic Program. See, since copper sulfate is derived from natural sources, it's allowed to be used on organic produce, even if it's no less harmful than synthetic pesticides. In fact, the Committee on European Communities noted in their recommendations to Parliament in 1999 that copper sulfate was even more dangerous than a synthetic alternative. Some wineries in France and other countries have even stopped growing organic wine because of copper in the soil. Now even though much of the spray is usually washed off the produce, it then ends up going into the soil, which then goes into the next batch of crops affecting that next batch of crops, which can't be washed off when it's actually in the produce itself. In other words, even those who are making the conscious decision to live healthy and eat organically, you know, they're at risk of toxic copper accumulation from even just this one source alone, especially in places where soil levels are not being properly monitored. So already with this list, I'm sure you can see how widespread this copper epidemic is just from these few sources alone. But we're just getting started. There's a lot more reasons also why people are overexposed to copper. So another source to understand, and this goes not only for copper, but for toxic metals as well, is in utero. So the baby, the fetus in utero, picks up via the placenta the mother's load of toxic excesses. In this conversation, it's copper. So if a mother is copper toxic, her unborn baby is picking up part of her excess load in utero, and that baby then starts his or her life with an inherently higher copper level, which then worsens in adolescence, and especially for girls, as their estrogen increases. And this is why it's so important, not only for adults, but for our young women and children too, to have early detection of copper toxicity. Dental amalgams is another source. So a lot of the amalgams also contain copper, which then gets leached into the body. Next is the vegetarian or vegan diet. 
And this has nothing to do with the reasons why one chooses to become vegetarian or vegan, nothing to do with the ethical reasons or any of that. This is strictly talking from a biochemical perspective. So the person who relies on a solely plant-based diet will inherently have a higher copper to zinc condition because the diet itself has a high copper to, to zinc ratio. We get the most absorbable form of zinc through meat. And most vegan sources of zinc are of lower absorption, especially due to the phytates. So once again, even though the vegetarian vegan is eating lots of zinc, it's not being absorbed adequately, which then allows copper to rise. Medications also contribute to copper excess, especially those that interfere with liver or gallbladder function, which impairs bile production. And bile is the primary route of excretion for excess copper. Pregnancy as well. So during pregnancy, the copper blood serum level almost doubles its normal levels, while at the same time, zinc levels drop, which allows copper to rise even further. Now, if copper doesn't come back down to its baseline after delivery, this can then directly lead to postpartum depression because copper is very closely linked with depression, right? So excess copper at delivery, what happens? Well, it's a higher tendency towards postpartum depression as well as anxiety and other copper-related symptoms. In the words of Dr. Malter, who again has been looking at this research and studying copper toxicity for more than four decades, with each successive generation, copper toxicity becomes more pervasive and common.